Ahead of the defence of his crown at next week's Australian Open, Transworld Sport travelled to Monte Carlo on the Côte d'Azur to meet up with one of the hottest properties in the tennis world. Over the years, this playground for the rich and famous has also become the place where many of the world's elite tennis players base themselves. Its tax-free status is motivation in itself to live here, but Djokovic also relocated here recently because his popularity in his native Serbia became so overpowering that he couldn't walk the streets without being mobbed by adoring fans. It's very peaceful here, and I like this place because I can have my privacy. I don't get disturbed or bothered by anyone and I live a more normal life. For me, that's important. It would be logical to assume that I'd wish to spend as much time as I can in my homeland, but that's not really possible at the moment. And, as you never know where life will take you, I'm not sure when it will be. The environment where Novak now lives and trains is a far cry from the one in which he spent his formative years. The oldest of three sons, Djokovic grew up in Belgrade during a time of war and economic instability. As a boy, he sheltered with his family from the daily NATO bombing raids of 1999. Over the last 20 years or so, my country has been through a lot of difficulties, both political and economic. There is a lot of frustration, and I'm well aware of all that. When I play, or when I win a big tournament, I represent myself first and foremost. But I also represent my country and the people in Serbia who support and follow tennis, and I'm very proud to do so. I would like to give something back to them, and I hope that I'm bringing them some happiness by what I achieve on the tennis court. It was in the aftermath of the bombing raids of 1999 that Novak left Belgrade. He was 12 when he moved to Germany to attend a tennis academy on the outskirts of Munich. Novak had begun playing tennis when he was four. At the age of eight, his talent was spotted by the same coach who discovered Monica Seles. After returning home following his three years in Germany, Djokovic turned professional at 16. The young Serb is currently ranked third in the world, behind Roger Federer and world number one, Rafael Nadal. My lifelong ambition is to become number one in the world, and I know that I'm relatively close to achieving this goal. But I don't want to put any pressure on myself with regards to this aim. It's important to remember that I'm only 21, and there are not many players who have become number one in the world at this age. I simply wish to be realistic in my goal. At the moment, there are two players in front of me who are better than me. I will do all I can to improve by at least one position in the forthcoming year. But I can't say for definite that this will happen. We'll just have to wait and see. Djokovic is coached by former Slovakian professional Marian Vajda. They've been together since 2006. It was Vajda who suggested that Djokovic move away from Serbia. The coach had become increasingly frustrated by their practice sessions in Belgrade, often being interrupted by Novak's army of fans. Nowadays, Djokovic trains at the Monte Carlo Country Club. He often practices with fellow professional Mario Ancic, who also lives here in Monaco. The Serb and the Croat have been good friends for many years. We have known each other practically since the beginning of our tennis careers. He came on the scene a few years after me, and I've been following his progress closely. He has improved so much over the years. Novak has got enormous ability. His game is excellent. He's got his family right behind him, and he's definitely focused on his tennis. He has the potential to achieve whatever he wants in the sport. Djokovic's parents still live in Serbia, where they run a pizza and pancake restaurant. His two younger brothers are also promising tennis players. 
Novak lives in Monte Carlo with his girlfriend, Yelena. The pair met in Belgrade five years ago and return home to Serbia whenever Novak's hectic schedule allows. In his homeland, Djokovic's popularity is staggering. He's easily his country's most loved sportsman. The Serbian Chamber of Commerce recently named him as Serbia's best personal brand. Along with his compatriots in the women's game, Anna Ivanovic and Jelena Jankovic, Novak has been responsible for a huge tennis boom in Serbia. Later this year, Belgrade will host the country's first ATP Tour event, after Djokovic and his family bought the license of a tournament previously held in the Netherlands. I'm very pleased that we've managed to organize an ATP tournament in Belgrade. It will take place in May 2009 and will give the tennis fans in Serbia and the surrounding areas the opportunity to see professional tennis up close. They'll be able to see what it's all about and support the players from our country. Away from tennis, Novak's big passion is soccer. His father was a professional footballer, and Novak believes that he could have made the grade too. His favourite team is Red Star Belgrade, but since he's been living in Monte Carlo, he's adopted AS Monaco as his club. On the day that Transworld Sport was in town, Novak was guest of honour at a Monaco game and was invited by the president of the club to kick off proceedings. Djokovic's likeable persona, not to mention his impersonations of other players, has made him a firm favourite with many fans of tennis around the world. I believe that with a smile on your face and with a positive outlook on things, then your life will be longer and easier. That's how I'm trying to go about things anyway. Two thousand and nine looks set to be a big year for Novak Djokovic as he continues his bid to loosen Rafael Nadal and Roger Federer's stranglehold on the men's game. All but one of the last fifteen Grand Slams have been won by either Federer or Nadal. The one exception was Novak's triumph at the Australian Open twelve months ago, and in just a few days' time, the twenty-one-year-old Serb will begin the defence of his title.